deploying your application is the most normal thing you do, right? Shipping features, causing, uh, fixing bugs, of course, but it would be nice to let your users know, and you can do so very easily with Nuxt. Let's see how it works. Here we go. Imagine you have an application out there that is deployed, and whenever there's a new version available so right after the build step on your CI, the users will get a little banner and update, ideally at the bottom or wherever you want. And then they can just click here to refresh, and actually they will get a fully new application or actually a newer application, and with the banner gone, of course. This is the behavior a lot of these websites have, right? Where they're like, hey, there is new version available, click here to update. And we wanna do the same with exactly the app you've seen in our Nuxt application. So let's start with a clean slate and implement it and also figure out what certain parts of the insides of Nuxt, like the app manifest, have to do with that. Ready? Let's get into a demo application. Our demo application is as minimal as usual. We only have our little style hack to see a uh, dark mode-ish behavior. And our app.view is also empty, except seeing this is my new app. So what we wanna do next is actually making sure that we can have some kind of update components. So let's just add a component here, components and say new version banner view, for example. And in here, we don't do anything else. and just say like H2, there is an update an update, uh, click here to refresh, something like that. And let's click here to refresh. We wanna probably make a button or a link, either way works, but here we can just say like, add click, refresh, and then we jump all the way into our script setup part to make sure, well, let's make the maybe even a P tag. And in here we say the refresh function, we define it by saying function refresh is, well, window.location.reload. Now, of course, a link would be nicer, but a link to the same page won't do anything, so that doesn't work. So we have to use a button here. Okay, so now we have this and we want to add that. So let's just add the new version banner down here. And so far so good, if we have a look at our application right now, we will see that there is that this is my new app and there is an update. And if I click here, it's actually doing the refresh. Wonderful, as it should. But the key part is missing, right? We only want to show that when there's actually a new build happening. Okay. So how do we do that? Back in our code, we're gonna to go to our nux.config.ts and here we go, we enable an experimental option. And the experimental option is called check outdated build interval, which already hints that there is a functionality like that built into Nuxt already. And that's true. So let's set this to 1000 times 10 here to just investigate what is actually happening. Because of course we can implement that, then you know how to do it, but we wanna see what's going on under the hood. So let's take a look at the dev tools in the browser and see what happens every 10 seconds there. And taking a look, we see this localhost 3000 because we're on a dev server, right? Latest.json request coming in frequently here. And the response to that is the ID, dev, and the timestamp. And what this dev would be, or in production, or in like after build, there would be an ID here. Well, if we refresh our page here, we see all the JavaScript, of course, we also see that dev.json. And here we have the ID, the timestamp, matcher, pre-rendered, and also some other information. And this is the so-called app manifest. It's basically a file that is there, generated automatically per build, which saves, for example, your client-side route rules that you define in your Nuxt config, or also a lot of other valuable information. And of course, as we need that kind of manifest, and there might be more use cases for that in the future, well, we also want to make sure we can use it to identify if there's a new one. If it's the same application, but deployed and on another port, so we make sure nothing is polluted here, we also see that it's not dev, but in this case, AD227, D85, and more like gibberish, because that's of course just the UUID. And here we see the same content instead of dev here. And the latest, now that is called every 10 seconds, also gives exactly that back. And the best part is that this is already enough to know when things change. So whenever there's a new build, the ID for the manifest will change, which in turn means that the latest will change. And if you have a look at the check outdated build.client.ts here in the Nuxt repository, we'll see how it comes to use. First of all, it's a disabled in testing mode, that makes sense. Then a timeout is defined, and then we have a function to get the latest manifest. So what's happening is, okay, we get the current manifest, there's a timeout where we reset it and set it again. Perfect, with the interval we actually pass to it, great. 
And then we do a call to builds latest with the current timestamp for cache busting. And then we just check, wait, if the current manifest ID and the meta ID that we just fetched, they're not the same. Well, we will let the user handle it. As it says here, a hook is called a next hook. Perfect. And then of course, the next ready we do and start the actual timeout. So after everything has been loaded uh, to not interfere with like requests too early. And that means you out there, you're responsible for handling that. So you can, as we have the banner now, make it show up. And now we have all the information that we need to do that. Back in the code, what we should do is we go into our app.view or actually any component, but in this case for a small application, this is totally fine. And in here, we want to get our Nuxt application again. So Nuxt app is use Nuxt app. And now we want to make use of this runtime hook. So we can say Nuxt app dot hooks dot hook. Or in our case, what I would prefer is hook once because we don't want to show it more than once necessarily. If they click it away, don't think they care much about it again, or you can't click it away and it's mandatory, who knows? So here we want to hook into a runtime hook and we have a lot of them. One of them though, if we take a close look here is app manifest update. Perfect. So whenever the manifest updated, then we can actually do something here. And this is also the hook, if you remember, this called right here in this default Nux plugin. So to do something here, well, of course, we don't care what the update looks like. We just want to make sure, okay, let's uh, allow to show this banner. And of course, for this, we want to say const is new version available. This can be a ref that's false by default. And in here, well, we just set it to true. That seems like very reasonable code. Of course, we need a dot value, very important, and we're good to go. Now, if you use this in your application, I would probably use an inline composable there. Also, just in case you never heard of inline composables, there's a wonderful video you should take a look at to organize a component better. It's very important and will help you a lot. Of course, if you watched the video already, then I guess watch it again if you haven't heard of it by now. But uh, what we want to do here now is we want to create a, a composable, let's say use new, no, let's say use version updater, something like that. Naming things is hard, but you get the drill. We copy everything in here for organizing that we return the is new version available. Also here we want to use read only to return it to make sure that this can't be tampered with from somewhere else without the dot value part. And now we call this use version updater up here. We get our is new version available out of that uh, result of that composable. It's a composable because it calls the use next app here and we can just hide the complexity away. If we want to take a look at that, people can unfold it. And now we put it in a VIF eventually and our banner is triggering or not. And the best part is that we can try it out straight away because I still have the tab open with our production application where the server is closed already, but that's still running and the request is still going on and on and on, serving um, nothing and failing, which is well not ideal in production, but right now it's fine. And then we can just rebuild the application and see what happens. So let's do that. If we now turn on the application server again, we will see, okay, that request went through. The problem is, well, this is an update was here before, so we can click to refresh. And now we should see that it's gone because we have that VF before, but it doesn't really prove anything, right? So what I'll do is, well, I will just quickly build the application again while we're on here. That should be pretty quick for a small app. And then we turned on again. So now you see the requests failing again. And uh, here we go. This is an update. If we take a look at this latest.json here, we will see, okay, this ID doesn't match what was here before. So that's why the updated hook is triggered. And eventually we can click here, we update, and then it will fetch the right manifest, the new manifest again. And from there on, the latest calls will fit again. So this is a very simple way of making sure that your Nuxt application is updated. One hint though, before you take a look at the whole app manifest topic, make sure it's not disabled because it is enabled by default, but you might have disabled that because you thought, what's that weird JSON call in the beginning? Now you know why it's there for, with also other reasons and more features in the future. So make sure this experimental app manifest option is not set to false in your Nuxt config. Any questions left, drop them in the comments as usual. Take a look at the other videos and other than that, happy hacking. See you soon.